Hello everyone, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities. I trust you had a good weekend and you'll have a fabulous week ahead. May it be surprisingly good for you. Uh, it feels like not a lot is happening in markets, as is the way of late. Uh, t things tend to go quiet in Asia and all the action happens a little bit on the London Open and then uh, throughout the New York session at various times, as if new days are starting all over again several times within the one day. That's been the nature of markets lately. As I said, it seems all a bit quiet, but there's a lot happening under the surface, uh, particularly on the central bank front, uh, where the Bank of Japan uh, now will be having a governor from the academic arena. Uh, so he will certainly be having to prove his stripes to the market. Markets hoping that this change of governor uh, will in fact bring in a new sort of fresh approach that's a little bit more hawkish on interest rates than they've experienced in the past. Part of that uh, desire though is based on current mar market positioning. So do keep in mind that the market is very, very long the yen. A lot of hedge funds around the world, a lot of major funds around the world have speculated the yen will move higher. So just be a little bit wary that yes, it can be moving higher, but there is already a very long market in place there. Over in Australia, uh, we're having all sorts of discussions about and uh, rumours about how there could be an incoming governor of the Reserve Bank. You may be remember that I was probably the first economist in Australia that said the only solution to the Reserve Bank's issues is that the governor of the RBA be appointed from outside the RBA. For too long, a few decades now, we've had people simply... Um, placate their masters and simply rise to the role of governor of the Reserve Bank without having really proven their salt at all uh, in terms of hard knocks in the real world. Um, we're probably, the rumor is that this could be a Canberra bureaucrat, uh, which is an improvement because at least we're from outside the bank. I think it would have been better to see what someone appointed more from the business community, more business experience, but certainly at least this would be a major step forward. And as I said, it's something we were the first to suggest should happen. And when we said that should be happening, everyone said, no, oh, what a load of rubbish. Well, no, again, our um, completely left field forecasts are actually happening. In terms of forecasts, and I said, not a lot seems to be happening. Uh, we do have markets sitting right on the edge of a cliff here. Uh, whether the edge of the cliff s sort of crumbles away underneath the weight of the selling that is now hitting equity indices around the world and the euro and the Australian dollar remains to be seen. But certainly there are buyers in the current regions. We're seeing good support across various uh, equity indices right here, right now. Uh, and similarly, in the euro US dollar and the Australian dollar US dollar crosses, the selling is persistent though, and then there's this kind of lost moment during the Asian session. So we'll see how Europe goes, but it does look as if markets are under renewed pressure. And as I spoke of last week uh, in a couple of my articles, it's looking as though for the first time, big institutional selling is back in the marketplace with regard to equities. Now, there's no surprise for that because even though we saw in New York on Friday, the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index edging up again, it's still edging up at historic crisis levels. And that is the key point to remember. Uh, so, you know, um, when a market spikes in one direction, of course it rebounds, but is it a change of trend? And also there's been a very close association of late between sentiment and simply the price of gasoline at the pump. If the price of gasoline at the pump goes up 50 cents a dollar in the US, sentiment drops. If the price of gasoline at the pump drops 50 cents a dollar, uh, sentiment improves. So gasoline prices have been coming down, but oil prices are already, global oil prices or crude, etc., are already on the way back up again so that gas, there will be gasoline price rises coming through in the weeks and months ahead in the United States. And that could quickly impact that University of Michigan survey again back to the downside. But even if it were to stay here or move a little bit higher, uh, consumer sentiment in the United States 
is still at you know historic crisis levels. So don't let that slip past your thinking. Uh, the markets have reacted a little bit to sell equities on that data because they felt that that's strong economic data. It isn't strong economic data. So even though I'm a bear, I think the market sold for the wrong reason, but still that's the nature of the market these days. Very skittish about just any headline without understanding the nuances in back of those headlines. So the market's down a little bit on that, but really there's just this growing realization of what we've been saying all the time. So we had this nonsense period of there's going to be this strong economic recovery, another Nirvana story. Um, I mean, it's all very catchy stuff because it's telling people what they want to believe. That's why it becomes instantly so popular. Um, and then the idea that the Fed will be pivoting and cutting rates. Oh, another want to believe, so I'll believe that story. And I think traders and investors should be aware that they're being peddled nonsense by really the equivalent of snake oil salesmen. And it's, you know, it always is the pitch to what you want to believe. It's very much similar to what was happening in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in recent years. And we've seen that style of uh, market forecasting and market analysis now to begin to drift rather strongly into mainstream commentaries about the major markets. And I think that was a large part of the big rally of January. And that rally is, as we've been forecasting, would eventually tire out. It kept trying to push higher and higher all the time. But we always said this is a vulnerable rally. We're now seeing price action that suggests that rally is already complete. That remains to be seen. There could be another bounce from this strong buying interest I'm talking about here. Uh, but overall, we are going to see, I think, for the weeks and months ahead, very heavy global equity markets as the reality of another strong military push by Russia uh, into Ukraine can occur at any moment as even though uh, you know, the economy of Europe stabilizes, manufacturing in Germany is negative, um, there's still concerns there. Greece has got negative industrial production for four months now. Uh, and all around Europe, there's still a lot of weakness. The UK economy is in a lot of trouble despite its equity market. Uh, so again, these false dawn equity rallies can be very strong, very powerful, sustained for a period of time. But eventually the reality of what's happening on the ground comes back to bite. I do like Chinese uh, equities and assets at this point. I think China is not going to be the miracle economy it once was, but it's going to be a steady performer from here, which will set it apart, I think, from the United States, which has a lot of structural issues to confront, which could take two to three years to sort out. Uh, and Europe's still really uh, on the precipice of a deterioration in the situation in Ukraine. So let's hope that doesn't happen. But if you're trading markets, you have to look at, what, at it for what it is, and that is a risk there. Um, the Federal Reserve is going to continue to hike interest rates, remain hawkish. It's interesting that the governor of the RBA, Lowe, who should never probably have had the job in the first place, and I've said that all along, uh, he, he's uh, not so willing to make comments on his one-year forecast. Uh, and this would suggest he only has bad news for the marketplace, or perhaps he's being whispered to behind the scenes that he might be moving on soon. Uh, that's a bit of a stretch. I've just made that up on the spot. But nevertheless, uh, change could be afoot at the RBA with a fresh appointment from outside the bank uh, at the next appointment, which comes up in not too much time at all. So that will be interesting to see a totally fresh approach at the RBA. I've said you need to have a leader appointed from outside the bank for the evolution, revolution, that that bank needs. I mean, it's so stuck in the past. They don't get anything right with their forecasting uh, and they badly mismanage monetary policy when that's precisely their job. So there has to be a revolutionary change at the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, this places a little bit of uncertainty around the Australian marketplace from the global investor perspective. 
It's one of the sort of left of field reasons I'm bearish the Australian dollar. I'm mostly bearish the Australian dollar because the global economy, global trade will continue to remain under pressure this year and probably possibly into next year. Uh, there's no fairy tale ending here to either rate hikes or economic turnarounds. Uh, I think the RBA will continue to raise interest rates even with a new governor and that means we will really start to stumble into a recession in, in, in Australia. Uh, and obviously it means ongoing mortgage stress for the Australian property market, particularly later this year. Now, all of that presents tremendous opportunity as long as you've been uh, you know, adhering to the idea of playing defence and looking to protect your investment portfolio using all of the abundant financial instruments that are available to you today. That's the opportunity. All the best, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities.